intelligence director. Uh, she will be the internal lead of our open source intelligence task force, uh, which is one of the major pillars uh, of the strategy that we implemented during the post-pandemic violent crime surge. Um, murders in New Orleans are down about 40% so far this year, uh, part of the nation's quickest homicide rate decline. Uh, just two years ago, New Orleans' homicide rate uh, was the highest in the country, um, something none of us were proud of. The numbers show that crime has been steadily declining since 2022. The chief was absolutely instrumental in executing the vision that brought crime down. Uh, this work with the Open Source Intelligent Task Force is one of those biggest factors. Chief Woodford will be playing the role of, uh, we were just talking about this in the room, of a, of a honey badger. Um, she is running point on building the best cases possible on the most dangerous, violent repeat offenders in the city so that we can all just live in peace. The number of people who are truly terrorizing the streets of New Orleans, it's not a big number. Uh, and that number will be her focus. Uh, she will be working directly with OSINT, Open Source Intelligence Task Force, which she is already intimately familiar with. Um, as the superintendent, she was present uh, at the very first meetings to create this unit uh, in the DA's office. This program that the DA's office created with uh, NGO Bancroft Global uh, at the height of the crime wave has proven itself successful. Those public safety gains were achieved by working hand in hand with one other person outside of the DA's office, and that person is Michelle Woodford. We now have an opportunity to triple down on the public safety gains we've already made together by bringing her into the DA's office. She is a tried and tested law woman. She gave her life to the department. She gave her life to the city. That is the type of person you want on your team. She loves this city. She loves that department. And she will make the district attorney's office better. Uh, she will help us perfect uh, communication strategies and protocols between homicide investigators and homicide uh, prosecutors. And she will be focusing again on the most violent crimes in the city. Um, some of you may have noticed uh, during her tenure, she's a doer. Uh, she's not a big talker. Uh, she is a woman of action. Uh, and that is exactly what we need to keep driving crime numbers down. Um, as some of you know, we've got Chief Harrison looking at things from a more global standpoint in terms of property crime, um, um, in terms of risk terrain mapping, in terms of figuring out where those hot spots are, whether it's illegal dumping, anything of that nature. And we've already shut down some problematic establishments with his help. This focus is more narrowly, ta this is more narrowly tailored. This is looking at the people that are terrorizing this community. Uh, focusing solely on them so we can suppress that and make them as uncomfortable as we possibly can. Um, and as some of you may realize, uh, uh, the MOU between the DA's office and Bancroft Global uh, had, a, had a, one of the pillars of that was planned obsolescence, which means at some point in time, we're going to bring all that work in-house. Uh, the only way to do that is to have someone who will be steeped in international best practices and how to use open source intelligence data uh, on the most violent offenders. And then we will scale that out uh, into other areas like human trafficking, uh, similar to the murder case that Chief Derbys tried very recently. Uh, it was a murder case that was rooted in human, human trafficking, and the witnesses who testified were the ones that were being trafficked. And then hopefully we can expand it out even further uh, into fentanyl distribution as well, using, again, that open source data. I'm talking about Facebook, Instagram, uh, things of that nature uh, to solve crime. Uh, and with that, uh, I want to welcome the Chief aboard. Chief? Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> and I'm sure everyone um, wants to know exactly what I'm going to be doing. It's a number of different things. Of course, working very closely with the NOPD homicide detectives and also um, their supervisors, making sure that uh, report submissions, that a timeline on that is um, steady and flowing very quickly. Also, really partnering with them, making sure that on both ends, we gather all evidence, as much evidence as possible, 
to get a case from arrest to indictment, and then, of course, um, to uh, prosecution. We want to, I'm going to be analyzing um, all the evidence along with um, our federal partners, along with the team at Bancroft to make sure we get as much evidence as we can to make sure we're bringing our most dangerous criminals to justice. You know, it is um, another way for me to serve um, the city of New Orleans. Of course, I always love NOPD. Um, it was where I was raised, I was made there. And so, of course, um, it's just another way for me to give back to NOPD, to the DA's office, and especially the people in our community, the people who live here, the people who visit here, to keep them safe, to make this city safe. So I am very, very pleased that um, I was invited by the district attorney, Jason Williams, um, to take the lead um, in this role. And I, I just know we're gonna, um, we're gonna win and that 40% is gonna turn into some, such a big number that is gonna be historic. And I know it's gonna be um, a worldwide model for other um, departments uh, to follow, other um, DA's offices to follow. So that is the kind of environment that we're gonna create um, with this position. Thank you, Chief. Look, uh, guys, we, we, we've been trying to raise the bar in every way we can. That's why we created this homicide unit. That's why we picked uh, one of the toughest, smartest, uh, most creative prosecutors to head up that unit in Matt Derby's. Uh, that's why we have uh, Chief Washington focusing on getting the best out of all of our investigators so that we have all the information we need when we get to court. Uh, and this is just rounding out the team so we can focus on the people that are uh, causing the most harm in our community. And that's going to be the chief's focus. And I'm looking forward to seeing the work uh, that this team is going to put together. Keith. Not going to get into that. I'm sure we'll get a public records request later on for that. But right now, I just want to celebrate the fact that um, um, we're putting the best team possible together. It's not rocket science, you know. Um, if, we, if, if you can put the best players in any sport on the same team, you're going to win more games. And are you meaning a team or is it just you? Like, how many people are on this department? What kind of team for the judge? Is that your appointment? So right now, right now, we have been working with Bancroft Global with a number of outside partners that are helping us basically scrub open source data, social media, to help solve crime, um, getting the most out of license plate readers, ring doorbell cameras, uh, uh, real-time crime cameras, uh, Project NOLA cameras. 10 years ago, uh, really, I mean, if you go back, I said 20 years ago, a file in a homicide case could fit into one accordion binder, right? Um, you couldn't fit the, the volumes of data that come from uh, the five or six body-worn cameras that are there, the dash, cameras or uh, volumes of information necessary to prove cases, you, you, couldn't, you, could, you couldn't put it in, in boxes and bring it to court because it's just that much information, which means you need people to know how to synthesize that information. Chief Woodfork is going to be our internal uh, director learning all of the new practices that are coming online uh, in this modern era to do that work so that we can do it in-house. And that team is going to grow over time, so. Okay, um, I have a question for Chief Woodford. Sure. Uh, how do you feel your, sorry for not calling you Chief. Um, <laughs> I still have proper call you Chief for the rest of my life. How, how do you feel your relationship with NOPD will help you in this role? Well, just leaving NOPD about two months ago now, of course I still have, um, a lot of people that I um, communicate with, talk to, but I think my relationship was solidified when I was there. Um, it's always important as a leader to make sure that you treat people well who work with you and work for you. And I think I did that while I was there in every capacity that I was in, whether it be a patrolman, sergeant, lieutenant, and then uh, uh, finally as the superintendent. Um, so building those relationships and making those relationships, I think because of that, um, 
I've um, gained the trust of a lot of different people who are there. A lot of people in hom the homicide unit know me very well. I've worked with them before. They worked with me before. Um, they worked for me um, on the department. So we have um, a real trust relationship. And I think working together, they, they know I'm going to do my very best to make sure that their cases um, go to trial. And then they get the convictions that they're looking for. Great. Um, so the open source intelligence task force, I'm not too so I just want to make sure I understand what exactly the task force's main goals are. Um, sure. I know you said it's kind of prioritizing the main uh, bad doers in the city. Kind of give me a clarification. Let me see if I'll walk you through a case study. So uh, there's a case uh, at a Waffle House, one of um, Young Greatness, uh, one of our um, real local talents that was taken away from us too soon. Individual that he thought was a friend um, uh, asked him to meet him at that Waffle House. Um, he went to the Waffle House, uh, they sat, they talked, uh, and as he was leaving, uh, two individuals came from behind a dumpster, opened fire on him, killing him in that parking lot, right? Uh, we had no witnesses in that case. Um, no one was coming forward. Uh, but we, what we did have, though, was we, we, we had uh, the real-time crime camera, we had the surveillance cameras uh, at that Waffle House, we had another surveillance camera at uh, Habitat Restore next door uh, that showed the cars leaving and showed individuals getting the car. And you saw that friend that he was supposed to be meeting, you saw hit him get in his car and follow behind the car of the suspects uh, that stole the car uh, from Young Greatness after murdering him. Uh, and then a ring doorbell camera picked up those individuals getting out of that car and getting into the other person's car. A license plate reader uh, was able to give us a license plate of that car. Now, we, at that point in time, we didn't know what was going on. We didn't have all the pieces. We had, were able to piece some of this together later on. But that license plate reader le led us to the name of a woman. Obviously, no woman was involved in this crime. However, we were able to track that name down to her Facebook account. And on her Facebook account, we were able to see her with that very same guy that was in that Waffle House meeting with Young Greatness. Right. People are putting their lives and their worlds out here and for the World Wide Web, right? Checking in when they go into restaurants, uh, taking pictures with different people. Uh, and so that information is good information in court. That information can connect the dots between in terms of why someone did something, who did it. Now, the person uh, who was convicted of that crime, he didn't pull the trigger. He got his young cousin and his young cousin's friend, two juveniles, to commit that crime. But we would have never been able to put that together if it wasn't the scrubbing of that open source data, social media, to connect those dots to actually let us know what those cameras uh, were telling us, to really put the web of criminality together. So open source intelligence task force, you got regular police work that might be knocking on doors, uh, checking those surveillance cameras, seeing what we have in that information, picking up the casings from the ground, um, looking for murder weapons. That exists, we know that stuff. But there's a whole nother area in this sort of digital forensic space uh, that, is, that has been largely untapped uh, by the criminal justice system that we are now delving into in a much more robust fashion. Um, it would take a lawyer, I don't know, months to go through someone's entire social media profile just looking for that one piece of information. It might be, in some instances, the clothes that someone is wearing uh, one Christmas. It might be a very unique uh, sweatshirt or sweater, and the, and the perpetrator on camera is wearing that same sweater uh, and sweatshirt, and we can connect the dots there, even though their face is masked. It takes a lot of time to do that work. Um, it takes a lot of technology and software to do it well. Um, and so the team that's doing it now is gonna be working with the chief so that we can do that internally and hopefully expand the types of cases we're doing. So kind of like a digital technological forensics. Exactly right. Exactly. And then um, another question, um, was Ms. Woodfork, was she the only person that y'all, you know, y'all had an opening for this position, y'all were like, she's the perfect person for this job, or were there other people open for this job, and y'all decided to narrow it down? It was, it, it was always uh, Michelle Woodfork. Uh, in fact, um, when and also she, then what, what led it to be her? When she, uh, when she got the appointment uh, as chief of police, uh, later on that, I guess probably that weekend, that Saturday, she came, she sat at my house, uh, and 
in between a six-year-old running around, uh, raising all types of fuss, we strategize and we put some, some pieces in place. Um, and those, those pieces yielded some real dividends for the city of New Orleans. Um, so it was a really a no-brainer um, uh, to really double down on, on a proven commodity uh, and get her back in so we can continue to do the work that we've done. Because if these public safety gains stay the same and flatline, uh, that's a problem. We want crime to continue to go down. Uh, she was an excellent partner in putting that in place and making sure that uh, her detectives understood why we were doing what we were doing, helping us craft it in a way that it was efficient and effective. So there was no other person that, um, that was ever in the running uh, for this position.